Once we are in the Azure portal, we're going to create or start testing this completion model. How can we do that? Well, first of all, notice on the left hand side there is a section called Playground. Here we have different options that we will explore throughout the course. But the section we're interested in is called Completions. You can see that this has brought us to a page indicating no deployments have been found because what we did was create the Azure OpenAI service, but we haven't created or specified which model we want to use for testing. So we can click on this button that says create new deployment. This will take us to the section where we can select a specific model to perform different tests. We have all the available models in this region here. Remember, we are interested in the one called GPT 3.5 Turbo Instruct, which will allow us to complete text. Next, we have a section, an option that allows us to select the model version. We only have one available, which is 0914, and by default, there's an option that says Auto Update to the current version. What does this mean? Well, as you might remember, I mentioned earlier that these models are constantly being updated. So if an improved version of a certain model is released, that current model will be used by default. So I recommend leaving this option on if you want to use the latest available version of a model. Next, we need to specify the name of a deployment. For example, I'm going to name it GPT-35 Turbo Instruct. This name can be whatever you choose. You also have this advanced options section, where you can set options such as content filtering, deployment type, and even select how many tokens you want to use per minute. This is very useful if your application uses many tokens, or if it generates a lot of content quickly, in that case, I recommend raising this number. If that's not the case, you can lower this number to a more manageable value. We also have this option available, which would allow us to utilize resources, if available, to use an additional quota that is not part of the selected tokens per minute. I'll leave these options as they are, click on create, and this initiates the deployment creation process. This automatically takes us back to the completions section, since this model we've built is a completions model. You can see we have the completions playground here, the deployment selected, and a series of examples we could use. We have this main box, this big text box, where we can start conducting various tests. What are we going to start doing? Here we can write any text, like rainbows are, and below it activates an option that says generate. We have other options to regenerate the text in case we want to do so. We also have this information here, indicating the tokens or the number of tokens we have used. If we select or click on the generate button, notice how the model will start completing the instruction or text we began with. That's why this model is called a completion model, because it completes the text according to what you have indicated previously. Later, we will look at more techniques on how to create good prompts and so on. Right now, we are just testing with this playground. Let's try another prompt. For example, JavaScript was created by... What do you think this will generate? Well, this will tell us who created JavaScript. Here we have information about how it was created and more details that could be interesting or of interest to us. Now, you can see that, as part of this text, it seems that at the end the text isn't completing correctly. This is because on the right side, we have the parameters that will allow us to specify how the output from this model will look. Firstly, we have a parameter called temperature. You could see it as how creative the model is. For example, if we have a very low value, it means the model will produce more repetitive and deterministic types of responses. If we increase this parameter, the temperature will generate more unexpected or creative responses. 
So we can play around with this parameter. For instance, if we deleted the text, reduced the temperature and clicked on the generate button, you can see that we have this text appearing on the screen. I'll indicate that I want to regenerate the text. You can notice that the text that was generated is exactly the same. This is because we reduced the temperature to its lowest level. If we again increased the temperature to 1 and clicked on regenerate, you can see that the response is different from the one we previously obtained. Nevertheless, the response is still cut off. Why is this being cut off? Well, because of this second parameter called max length or the maximum number of tokens. Basically, this parameter is used to specify how many tokens we want to use. There is a maximum allowed, which is 4000 tokens, used both for input and output. That is to say, you can see that as part of this text we have here a number of 104 tokens, which would be the input tokens in case we wanted to continue with this text. If we added this number of 104 tokens to the output tokens, this would give us the total tokens used in this generation or by this model in generating this text. Another parameter we see as part of the playground or the model is stop sequences. This parameter allows us to make the response stop at a desired point, such as the end of a sentence or a list. For example, suppose you want to create a list. Next is a list of things you might buy at the supermarket. If we click on the button that says generate, this will create a list for us. We know lists typically start with a number. That's why the model starts to create the list with a specific enumeration. So, if I go to the stop sequences section and specify that I want my stop sequence to be a 6, the model should only generate values until it finds a value, which in this case is the stop sequence of 6. Let's test this. When we click regenerate, you can see that as soon as we reach number 6, it no longer appears because it is the stop sequence we've set previously. This is why the stop sequences section is so useful. Another parameter we can use as part of the model is frequency penalty. This parameter is used to decrease the probability of repeating a token in proportion to how often it has appeared in the text so far. Thus, we could reduce the likelihood of repeating the exact same text in a response. We also have a parameter called presence penalty, which helps reduce the likelihood of any token that has already appeared in the text being repeat. This could increase the probability of introducing new tokens into a response. In summary, while frequency penalty concentrates on reducing the repetition of specific words or phrases by adjusting their probability based on their frequency of occurrence, the presence penalty seeks to expand thematic variety by penalizing the introduction of concepts or topics already mentioned, regardless of the variation in wording. These two parameters are useful for controlling redundancy and encouraging diversity and originality in the generated responses. We can also see a parameter called best of, which allows us to generate multiple responses and display only the one with the highest overall probability among all its tokens. The responses generated as part of this option that are not used still incur token usage cost, so you must use this parameter very cautiously. Make sure to also set the parameters for the maximum response length and any stop sequences you might use as part of the prompt. Lastly, there are also a couple of options that allows us to insert text before a response generated by the model and to add information or text after the option has been generated. How can we do this? Well, let's say we have this prompt indicating a list of 5 popular dog names. If we click on the button that says generate, as we've seen before, the items are generated with a number before each name. What we can achieve with this pre-response text is, 
for example, placing a dash. We're going to indicate that we want to use this piece of text before the response generated. Notice that when I click on generate, it places that symbol I indicated, which forces each of the elements to start with a dash instead of a number as we saw in previous examples.